You're watching The Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. When there's a change in a coaching staff, there's always a transition period. Today on The Katrina Merriweather Show, we talk to the players about buy-in. I had learned very quickly what it means to be a maker. The game is on. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. 16 wins in the very first year of Katrina. Who'd have thunk it? Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Willoshin. And I'm Tyler Springs. It was a pretty awesome year in year one for Katrina Merriweather. Today, we talked to some of her players about their experience. Elena, let's go back to the very beginning of the year. Let's go to Memphis Madness, where for the first time we had seen you since the year before, and I was amazed at how much weight you lost, how good you looked. My first thing is, what motivated you to do it, and then how did you do it? I was like, you know what, this, this is my last year. Like, I gotta go out with a bang. And so I just really was working out like every single day after that, like getting in as much as I could. And I just had like my trainer just like working me out, even if I was in there by myself. And I just, I just wanted to, wanted to be my best year. So your last year, and it's gotta be tough, total transition, new coaching staff, new approach, new teammates, one other person uh, that's gonna be beside you in, in the paint. How did that go? How different was it for you? It was, it was it was really a breath of fresh air. Like um, it was different a little bit because I mean, not not too much I guess because I played with Dosi last year and so she was a big post too. But I mean Tyler, she's just really dominant. So being able to like step out and shoot the shot because they was trying to guard her in the paint, I think that was really nice of me. And then the coaches that came in really open minded about the program and stuff like that, and like they believed in us. So I think it was um, an easy transition. What did you think about working with Coach T? I love Coach T. She, she's just so hardcore, but she's like real mellow too. Like she's not going to yell at you, but she's going to give you that eye, like, like get it together. So like, I really loved her and I was glad that I had her my last year. When did you know this team would be different from the ones the years before? Well, as soon as I found out we was getting a whole new coaching staff, I knew like right then it like kind of clicked in my head that, oh, like this is going to be the year. Like we're going we gonna to break some barriers and things like that. Like. We're going to change the narrative of Memphis women's basketball. At a certain point in the season, you had a role change where you and Lynetta Williams kind of swap spots in the system that you guys were running. Can you walk us through that and why that made a difference to the way you guys played down the stretch? A lot of the times in the post, I was being doubled and stuff like that. So they felt like if I stepped out and like started hitting, hitting some shots, it gave um, Lynetta open shots in the paint. And I was, I was fine with it anyway because I, I wanted to extend my game anyway. I, uh, practice a lot in the off season, just trying to perfect it and like hit shots at a high percentage. So I was excited. When you look at how you guys performed against the American in the regular season, what did you like? What did you want back? I wish we could get back a couple of the games that we dropped, you know, like the SMU game that we dropped the first time and both of those two lane games, like they were super close games. But I mean, I just feel like everything happens for a reason and so, you know, I just take it for what it is. What's the thing that Katrina Merriweather has taught you the most? You know, Trina, uh, she, she's taught me a lot, but like, I, I guess I would just say like, stay in the course. You know, like she, she didn't know what to expect when she came in and I didn't know what to expect from her either. But like, I think I just stayed the course and just trusted in God and trusted in her that like, she would change this program and she has. What's in line for Elena Davis after basketball? I want to play professionally, so I plan on going overseas, and I also want to um, finish my degree. And if I stay on track, I'll be able to graduate in December of this year. But I also want to be a sports commentator, so that's that's what I'm that's what I see myself doing. Tyler, you're from Southern California, sunshine, beaches. Five years ago, what made you decide to go to Dayton, Ohio, and Wright State? Um, so I wanted to go to school out of state. That was always my plan. And so all of my offers were in-state. I mean, it was either Northern California or as close to Long Beach State. So Coach Trina texted me and was like, hey, like I'm Trina Merriweather, I'm the head coach at Wright State. And I remember this day like vividly because I was on my way to school and I was in the car. I was like, mom, have you ever heard of this school? 
And she was like, no. I was like, neither have I. I was like, I don't know. But I responded back to her and was like, well, I have a game tomorrow. I know if you want to come out, I know it's like last minute notice or whatever. And the next day at my game, she was there. I was like, okay, man. okay. And then so ever since then, like we talked a lot on the phone and she was just a really nice, cool person to talk to, get to know. And so I decided to do a visit in November. And my plan was to sign do the late, the late sign period. So I went in November. I fell in love with the school, fell in love with the team, the coaches. Like, I know it was so far from home. Didn't think about the winners or anything. Like, it was just the school and the atmosphere. And so, um, I mean, I signed early. I signed on my visit and I was like, oh yeah, like I like it here. So ever since then, she's been stuffing me. <laughs> you talk about making it a family. How was it making it a family with your new teammates? Because you knew Imani Jefferson, but everybody else it's pretty new to work with, right? No, like in the beginning, they were just open. Like they were welcoming us. Like, I just thought it was gonna be a little bit different. You know, you have two people coming from a different program and like a coaching staff too. So just a culture change and all that stuff. But they've been, they've been amazing. They've been helpful, like getting to know the campus, know around Memphis and everything. Like, and like from the first day, like my roommates are Maddie and Karaya. So like from the first day they came in like, hey, like let's do something. Like let's go to open gym, like let's go to the gym, let's hang out or something. So they just, they've been really welcoming and like they just, we just all clicked like instantly. So you've been in Southern Californian, you've been in Dayton, Midwest. What's it like to be in Memphis and how was that for the city and you? I like it, it's, some, it's very different. I want to say it's diff way different than Ohio, um, but it's been good so far, you know, just, you get to, especially Bill Street, I can say, like the music, like going to BB Kings and stuff like that, just seeing it differently. Like I've never been to Memphis before, before coming here. So it's been really good, a different culture change and I like it a lot. So when you first got here, you saw that, you know what they had gone through. They got to accept Katrina. You're used to winning. Did you foresee 16 wins? I knew we were going to win. I knew we were going to make a change. And I mean, I knew it was going to be 16 or more, 15 or more, but I knew we were going to definitely turn this program around from the beginning and it went good so far. What is your degree gonna be in and how are you gonna use it in the future? Well, I'm getting my master's in sports management. I have my bachelor's in communications. And so I do want to probably wanna go into coaching. I think like now that I'm done with basketball, I think it like really set in like, okay, like I know I don't wanna play anymore, but I do wanna be around the game still. So maybe coaching or still become a ESPN analyst. analyst. What, do, what do you think your best attribute as a coach would be? Knowing the game, I mean, playing for Katrina Merriweather and seeing like how she like does things on the court and off the court. I think like that has played a big role in like how I wanna do it. Like if I ever have my own team, if possible in the future, but playing for like seeing her and like how she runs things makes me want to do it the same way for my team. Part of your communications work, you've had a podcast this year with Lane Davis. Has that changed the way you talk about basketball just from talking to both your peers and other people related to the game? Has it changed the way you think about basketball and the way it's covered? No, it definitely does. Like now, like as we're doing the podcast, we're going deeper into who the players are and the team and the coaches and stuff like that. So it just gives a different out outlook of it from when you are a player. Like when you're a player, you see players because you know them because of AAU and stuff like that. But now you have to look up their stats and see what they're doing, like who's up for national player of the year. Like are they consistent and stuff like that. So I think that's definitely changed on how I see the game in a good way though, but I think it's changed. So if you were an ESPN analyst doing your game, how would you describe you? That's, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I would say I'm a dominant post player. I'm very strong. Rebounding is my, like I take pride in rebounding. So you can definitely see that on the court and rebounding putbacks in. I think as a post player, I'm a really good passer too. So I would say that she's a, she can see the floor as a post player, like face up, she can find the shooters. That's what we just did. I'm gonna be sad to see those two post players go, but I'm gonna be glad to see Jamira Schutz and Maddie Griggs come back, and we talk to them in just a second. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. When you look at the Tiger playmakers, their biggest are Madison Griggs and Jamira Schutz. Both are returning next year, and they had some thoughts on year one. Inside Access is presented by Chick-fil-A. Pride of Brownsville, Jamira, I think I'm looking at you for the first time and not seeing a brace on your knee. How nice is that? That's always nice. Um, I got to a point where in the season, um, I warmed up without it and I didn't put it on till game time. So that's always nice, nice not seeing me, you know, in a big brace. I know it's obvious, but how much has it changed this year for you 
being healthy now rather than trying to come back end of last year where you're just sort of testing your, your knee out? Huge turnaround. Um, I know coming in, uh, well, like the end of last season, um, I got to play, you know, a couple of minutes, not really, you know, been like trying to get like into the swing of things. But now since I'm back, like is I feel like myself, like the one that came in when I first came to Memphis. So that's great. Was there a moment for you when you said, OK, I'm back? Yes, um, it was one time. I want to say it was the Tulane game, actually. Um, it was like I knew I was back, but still, like, in my mind, I didn't fully trust it. Because, you know, it, like, at this point, it's just a mind game. Because, like, I know that my leg is strong enough. Like, if it wasn't strong enough, Monica wouldn't let me, you know, come back or Meredith. Like, um, Tulane game, the girl, like, kind of fell on my knee. Uh, and it, like, kind of hyperextended back. And when it came back, it felt normal. So I was like, yeah, it's ready. What was it like building a relationship with this new staff? Because they come in, maybe they haven't watched tape of your previous seasons to know the player that you were pre-injury. They just see the Jamira they've got now. And the Jamira they saw probably summertime, it's not the Jamira who was in mid-season form late in the year. It was good for like the both of us. Um, I know when I when they came in, they did say that they watched like a couple films on me, like how I was, and then like later when I got hurt. Um, it was just good that they like gave us a chance, you know, to prove ourselves instead of you know like usually people just go in and they'll like wipe up wipe up the whole team, you know, you know get their own you know team. But she gave me a chance, um, and it ended up being good. What are two or three of the things that? you once you heard you knew this was going to be better the culture the culture of course the culture um the coaching staff with them being together for so many years and them knowing each other you know before like as kids they knew each other so i liked it and they was like still together so it's like building relationship you know for years and like basically like believing in us like you could tell they studied some of us before they even got the job. So it was just like, wow, like you really, you believe in me. So it's only right for me to believe in you, so. You guys started playing some of your best basketball of the year right at the very end. I think those last two ECU games and the loss against South Florida. What did you like most about those games and the way you guys played as a squad? It showed us like what we're capable of. It's a lot of teams, like even those teams that we play, they've been together for a while. Um, the coaching staff have been with those players for a while. For So for us to like just meet this past season and do the things that we did, it's gonna be special these next couple of years with training. So you're coming back for that special time. What, what are the things that you personally wanna work on? And what do you think the team has to be better at? Taking care of the ball, um, of course, as a team. Um, I can be more vocal. I can be a better leader. And basically anything that they need me to do, I'm going to do it. What was it that solidified in your mind that you were coming back? Because we don't know how you felt beginning of the season, but was there something that made you believe, I want to be here and I want to be here again? Just being like around like everyone, like it's literally like the coaching staff alone, like this, literally what you call a family. And I love like being a part of the culture that we're building together here at Memphis. Any personal goals that you might have for yourself in your senior season? Taking the newcomers under my wing, that's a goal that I want to be consistent with. Because when me first, when I first came in, I really didn't have that. So it was just like now, like with the things that was thrown on me, especially like with the new culture with Trina, it was like new. I handled it well, but it was new. Like I never had, you know, someone to like show me the way. So I want, I want to be that teammate for them. The sharpshooter from Houston High School, Maddie, when did you know that you could be the shooter that you've become? Um, probably my freshman year, uh, when I came out shooting as uh, well as I did, and I kept putting on, um, putting in the work after practice, before practice, and I wanted to be the best shooter, and uh, that's what I became after high school. My you didn't freshman know year. in high school or no. junior high? Really? No, it really just popped up on me my freshman year. I wasn't expecting any, any of it. I wasn't expecting to break records. I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, to shoot as many threes I did. I just came expecting to win. And, you know, it just turned out in my favor. Early part of the year, 
How did it feel trying to get your feet wet, just playing new with new teammates, new coaches, new system? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little pressure at the beginning, but uh, once we all got comfortable with each other, it was a little bit more easier, start to flow a little bit more. Uh, we start having fun. So it wasn't, wasn't too difficult at the beginning. Why'd you feel the pressure? Uh, I just felt pressure to do good. We had a good coach, we wanted to do good for her. You know, we wanted to impress our fans. You know, we knew we were gonna have a big fan base coming in this year. So we wanted to do good for everybody, our, ourselves, teammates, her, fans. You know, we had a, it was just a little bit of pressure just to get that boost of going in the beginning of the season. There's some games where you guys were up. There's some games where you guys were down this year. I think one that stands out is the Tulane game where you guys hit 12 three-pointers at their place. How cool was it for you being someone who shoots so well to see your teammates kind of picking you up and helping you out? Yeah, it was phenomenal. I didn't realize that we shot that well until I went back and watched the game. So uh, yeah, it was it was great. You know, it was great cheering them on and it was great to see them cheering me on. We played really, really hard that game. You talked about the winning continuing and you're coming back. So what have you got to do this year to really help the Tigers next year? Probably be more of a leader, more vocal next year. You know, I've learned um, it's probably my role now since I'm becoming a senior, junior, I kind of was trying to transition into that leader. Senior is probably definitely gonna be that major leader role for me. And not just being a shooter, but just being a team player, team playmaker leader, and uh, just be more vocal on the court to help my younger teammates and help everybody else out on the court. Last thing, is there an ultimate number in your head, record in your head with threes that you will be sitting in the gym this summer thinking about as you work out? Probably 100 or 115 around it. You know, uh, I'm not just going out there to shoot just to, I gotta get this, I gotta get that, but I'm going to prepare for it. And, you know, hopefully it'll come up next year. So yes, yeah, probably 100 or 115 around there. You've heard from the players what they think, and now it's time to hear from the head coach. Always forward looking, Katrina Merriweather gives you an outlay for the off season. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Let's take a look at the AutoZone Road Ahead. When you look at the off-season calendar, what are the important thresholds for you to clear? Yeah, I think that our conditioning, and, and you mentioned before us um, having a strength and conditioning coach that was being filled in by Nick, who, was, who did a great job for us, given all the hats that he's been wearing, you know, for the last few months. Um, but we just have to get stronger. Uh, we have to get tougher. Uh, we have to compete on a different level consistently. And I think that that was why our season was two steps forward, three steps back, one step forward, two steps back. Uh, a lot of the time was just our inability to consistently perform. And I believe that that starts in the weight room and with conditioning. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, and then also getting in the gym and working on some individual skill development. Um, those two things I think will, will help us push to that next level for next season. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. We've covered it all baseline to baseline on Tiger's women's hoops this year. Dave is back to wrap things up after this. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show presented by Chick-fil-A. Every season has to come to an end. This has been a long and winding journey, but in the end, a very nice one. And we want to thank all of you for being a part of it. We'll see you again next year. Have a great summer. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. I learned very quickly what it means to be a man. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield. This has been a presentation from Learfield.